Well, there's a certain group of people and a lot of people who, who have been born down here to help at this time. And they've been born for the last 4,000 years. They've been sent here to learn and then, you know, learn again, learn again to right now, because this is it. You know, this is, this is the big transition and they've been learning. So what does that mean? Well, you kind of volunteer to come down. So you get in God's queue. I'll volunteer. And they say, well, you know, don't forget that the food is all hijacked, the, the water's hijacked, the air's hijacked, everything's hijacked. You know, you can get attachments, you can get abducted. Yeah, I'll do it. You know, and you get down here, and you know, a lot of starseed people I hear every day, I don't belong here. Are you sure they dropped me off at the right planet? And it's important to connect with your soul family, whoever that starseed family are. Maybe it's Palladium. <laughs> Absolutely. Christopher, thank you so much for taking the time, man. I'm really excited to talk about your journey. Um, let's start at the beginning. I know you kind of led me in that <laughs> before the interview, but uh, let's go ahead. So uh, your, your, your bio says that you were experiencing some pretty, um, <laughs> I don't even know what else to say, uh, some phenomena early on in your life. So um, let's start there. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, I realized when I was young, I used to see kind of craft in the sky, even at school, you know, oh, there's, that, there's a craft over there. Nah, it's just, it's just your imagination. And, you know, it got worse one night, you know, I had a anarchy reptilian creature and they, they could be edited between nine and 13, 14 feet tall. The thing was actually sitting in the corner of my room. was said, dad, dad, there's a reptilian here, you know, he comes going up, what, 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 you know, it's there, you know. Where you know, like, oh, obviously you can't see it, and you know that was the incident. It, it took me to understand, even at the age of four, that other people couldn't see what I saw. So if I kept, if I kept on at this, of course they're going to send you a psychiatrist, say you're nuts, and put you on some sort of medication. So, so when he'd gone, the thing was still there, it looked pretty snarly, and you could always tell with these creatures because they're like fallen souls. You know, they're there to manipulate most of them. And it felt dark, and I think, this is not good. So, you know, I kind of said, get out of my bedroom. It went up. Wow, that worked, you know. And from that, I learned to manage them a little bit. And because, uh, you know, even the prayers were on the website, prayers are just a map of intent. It's a map of intent, like get out of my room, you know, in a very strong manner. And um, so anyway, you know, growing up, uh, saw these things, and then uh, kind of got into this uh, place where, um, the third dimensional world teaches you you've got to be the best. And, you know, of course, I had dyslexia really bad, so I couldn't spell very well. Um, I was in the remedial class, even for maths, and I was brilliant at maths, but terrible at English. And being in England, it's the key instrument. You, if you're not good at English, you're remedial, you're useless, you know. And so anyway, um, eventually my father went to school and said, look, he can do the top group, bottom group math and middle group maths quicker than most of the top group people can do it so they put me in the middle group you know which is better than remedial and of course you know that was a change but when I went to what we call over here high school which is it was secondary school then um someone flagged me you know the teacher who first um took me um he flagged me he said this guy's got dyslexia and he called my father in and uh, after that things change you know and uh but you know even so it's it's interesting because you know, you kind of choose your parents coming down here. And my father wasn't the best, you know, he used to shame you. And even when I left school, um, I did an apprenticeship and they sponsored me to do a degree. And I was so excited that day. I said, yeah, that's brilliant. So I've gone home, dad, dad, you know, they sponsored me to do a degree. Ah, oh, blimey, you're too thick to get a degree. And so, you know, I thought, oh, right. And so I'm going to get one. And I got one. <laughs> I'm going to get a master's. I've got one of those as well. And, you know, I've done PhDs and things like this with seminaries and done the research and things. Uh, but um, it just shows you that, you know, somehow the parents probably you chose, uh, instead of molly cuddling you, they, you know, they made you feel the opposite and made you do things outside the box that maybe you wouldn't have done. So 
I thank him for that, you know. Um, he still shames me now. He thinks I'm nuts, which I take that as a compliment. Yeah, I'm nuts. Because <laughs> if it was normal, I'd think, wow, what a crazy world we live in, you know. Well, I feel like, you know, what is normal really, right? Like uh, society says normal is this, like we're, you know, I feel like like you said earlier, and I don't, I can't remember if it was on the interview, like recorded or not, but we all have these gifts, I think, right? Like, I feel like we're just not, we're just so used to the the five senses that we, you know, we come here when we experience this, you know, you, you call it a three-dimensional realm, this physical reality. I and mean, that's how we experience it through the, the, the sight, the, the feeling, the hearing, our senses, like that's why it's so sensitive, right? Like our, our lips, our nose, our taste buds, like, because that's how we experience this. But if we like close down and get, go inside to the deeper parts of ourselves, we don't even know how to use that technology. Like we don't even know how, like, you know, I'm just learning now after a greater part of a year to like experience meditation and like to stop thinking that I'm going crazy when I experience something, right? Like to stop judging it as, oh, it's just your imagination, right? Like ima the imagination is probably one of the greatest tools that we have, but we, we put it off as something that is, that is lesser than our reality because we we don't know how to experience it. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? I agree. I mean, your, your imagination, it's like, you know, there, there are beings that, you know, people put in fairy tales, you know, uh, that actually exist in different dimensions on other planets. And I think, you know, the uh, imagination does create reality. And, you know, it's like you say, what's right or wrong? It's like, you know, people take the needly thing or not, you know, is it right or wrong? And the answer is there's no right or wrong. That's your understanding and your perception of what the thing is and do I ingest it in my body? And so, you know, it's like my father, they've done it all. And, you know, I haven't. And he shames me like, you should do this, you should do that. And no, you know, that's not my reality. And I told him, you know, I said, there's no right or wrong. Your perception of your research and understanding is your perception. Mine's very different. But please don't shame me because you know, there's no right or wrong in this thing, you know, about mm -hmm. anything, really. Mm -hmm. It's people's understanding, I think, of where they are and uh, what they're doing in this either third dimensional world matrix or or you're out of it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I choose my life completely out of it, you know. And sure. Well, you had you went to the corporate world, right? Like you did that. You're, I, I feel like you were, you were successful in that, right? And then you lost it all. Um, but I feel like in you know, in your story, you had made a promise to the larger consciousness that you would start using your abilities or your gifts towards healing or towards the greater good. Is that right? Absolutely. And, you know, I think when I was in the corporate world, I couldn't stand it. I, I was pretty high up in Philips Consumer Electronics, uh, pretty high up at Marconi, did some huge projects, but used to couldn't stand going to work. And, oh, God, it's a paycheck. I've got to go to and you go to work, you come back, you know, you're in the matrix, you know, just, and you get a paycheck, you know, does it cover the bills? For a lot of people, it doesn't. So, you know, you're just in this recycling mode of stress because you can't pay your bills, uh, earning money, you know, going to the store, watching TV. And I didn't do that, of course, because I'm not interested in TV very much. But I think it's important to step out of that, you know, if you're really going to make it, because if you don't, you know, you're just going to live life the matrix. If you step out, and step out means really, Get in a new place, you know, uh, getting people who love you around you, hold the space for you, don't shame you, who you can be raw, authentic and honest with, and they share the same ideas. And, you know, it's my perception now. I mean, we do thousands of healings a week. And, you know, from what I can see is that because of the bifurcation, the separation in families, you know, uh, some of the families, well, I never want to see you unless you take a jab or unless you do this and that. That's not okay, you know. Uh, if love comes down to a needly thing, then we've got a big problem. And my answer to them is always set your boundaries. You know, it's if if your mother's love's that fickle, then really it's no love at all. You know, you need to mm. learn to take a step back, set boundaries, and get in this really great space. And I, I've done it myself. You know, I don't have people in my life who drag you and suck the life out of you. I have people who really hold you up and love you for who you are. You know. Mm -hmm. And there's very few, and I think, you know, the, the definition of blood's thicker than water, to me, doesn't, doesn't cut the mustard nowadays, because a lot of starseed people who are born down here, they can be spliced at birth. So what does splicing mean? Well, you need enough DNA on some of the starseed families, like Actorians, Mekilzadet, um, not necessarily Palladians, but uh, Andromedans, 
So some of these people have come down to agree to come down. Their mother has probably been abducted and they've either put eggs and sperm or just eggs in. And uh, therefore they were born down here. The reason why they do that is because the soul uh, will not interface into the body unless you have the right DNA and light body within the, within the DNA. So that's an important point as well, I think. You know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I have to be honest with you. I, I, I'm not too well versed in star seeds or that part of um, people's ideologies, right? Like, so like when you talk about, like I, I obviously have heard about them, but I don't necessarily know a whole lot about that. Like I have, I am very much into um, learning how to grow my consciousness and how to make it uh, um, uh, reach higher levels of consciousness for myself so I can receive information or connect with that higher self. Um, Out-of-body out of experiences are like something that I'm trying to achieve and uh, that, you know, bringing that awareness from this physical body to that uh, energy body or whatever that may be. Um, but so like when you say star seed, like what is that? Well, there's a certain group of people and a lot of people who, who have been born down here to help at this time. And they've been born for the last 4,000 years. They've been sent here to learn and then, you know, learn again, learn again to right now, because this is it. You know, this is this is the big transition and they've been learning. So what does that mean? Well, you kind of volunteer to come down. So you're getting God's cue. I'll volunteer. And they say, well, you know, don't forget that the food is all hijacked, the, the water's hijacked, the air's hijacked, everything's hijacked, you know, you can get attachments, you can get abducted. Yeah, I'll do it, you know, and you get down here, and, you know, a lot of starseed people, I hear every day, I don't belong here. Are you sure they dropped me off at the right planet? And it's important to connect with your soul family, whoever that starseed family are, maybe it's Palladium, maybe it's Actorium, because when you do, when you meditate with them, they're the guys who are going to really show you your gifts and give you downloads. So, and downloads actually are, is something where you don't realize you've got it until you need it. Mm. And suddenly you think, how do I know all this information? I mean, I, you know, I know more about the anatomy of the body than most doctors. And yet, you know, I've not been a doctor and, you know, uh, an MD and I've never been a nurse. And yet, you know, I, I understand this because they've been showing me cause and effect. This is this, that's that, you know, and, over a period of time, it was a learning experience. It was it was pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. How do you, do you do you receive like how do you heal? Do you see someone's aura? Do you see somebody's energy? Do you see how does how what does that how does that what does it look like? I can actually look inside the body and see whether organs are sick, like if they look gray, and you know if there's cancer tumors, if there's uh, blockages. Like for example, a lot of people have blockages in the uh, intestines at the moment. Why is that? Well emotion from the heart bleeds down there and it paralyzes it now if you get an attachment we talk about attachment if you look at jesus teachings i'm not a christian but i do like jesus teaching talked about demonic entities if they attach to you then what happens is like anarchy draconians can sit in the abdomen so ab abdomen gets bloaty for no reason it paralyzes the intestines from the end of the cage down so when you eat as it gets further down it backs up you feel blah you know it also paralyzes the liver and the adrenals, so if you're exhausted, and it sends you negative thoughts as well because it taps in the spinal column. So these things, you know, it's it's slightly outside the box, but but they do attach, and Luciferians the same. So there's different entity uh, that can attach that can really drag your vibration down. So it's important to rid yourself of those before you get a really clear channel because then you can get... You know, it's my job here. I don't believe in gurus. I don't believe in anything like that. You are your own guru. You know, you're a sovereign being. So it's my job to help people get back to that sovereign place. Now, if you look at it, what's the biggest instrument that stops you? And that, that would be emotion. I mean, if you look at if you look at what's happening today, people who ingested emotion, hundreds of thousands of layers, and it drops your vibration, it makes you sick. So, you know, we have a fast track method of releasing emotion so that you can get get your vibration up and get your energy level up to a place where you're leaping out of bed in the morning and excited for the day. Mm. But that also, of course, part of that is choosing what work you do. You know, what do you want to do? You know, do you want to go to a corporate system and get dragged down? Or are you going to take a step back and say, I want to do my gifts? Now, for many people, they don't have the, the faith that if they do their gift, they'll have enough money. And I had the same, I mean, 
<laughs> yeah. I always go back to a time when I went, to, <clears throat> I went for this reading, what, 22 years ago or so. And I sat there and this woman said, well, she said, uh, you're gonna go to America, you're gonna get remarried, and you're gonna live off donations. And, what? <laughs> Can you tell me that again? Uh, yeah, you know, you're gonna be married and live off donations and go to America. And at the time, I thought, yeah, this is, you know, I didn't tell her that. I just went out and thought, yeah, this is no, no good. And, and I looked today, and the woman was absolutely spot on, right? You know, it's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> so, but but there's, there's no timing in it, of course. But, you know, that was quite far outside my way of thinking when I was stuck in England going to corporate systems. Now, you know, I realise and help people with the fact that having the faith to step out with your gift, um, you do get blessed every day for it, you know, um, and God blesses you for sure. You know? mm -hmm. Well, how do you find that gift, right? Like there's, I mean, there's a ton of people listening right now that are kind of like that want to have a gift, right? Like what, how do you help them develop it or how do you even help them find it? Well, normally I get them to find their own gift, but first, firstly, like what you're doing is getting into meditation, where into kind of transcendental meditation, where you're really kind of out of body, you're connecting with a soul family of starseed people or guides or whatever, and they'll show you the way. It's really important to discover it for yourself, you know, uh, because so, you know, how do you meditate? Well, okay what you have to do is let the mind go oh that's really very difficult to do because most people oh hang on i've i've got to do the shopping tomorrow I've, I've got to do this and that you know because life is so busy i think what you have to do is get off the hamster wheel release a ton of emotion so you almost get like hippie fire where you're in a relaxed place nothing matters you feel start to feel your vibrations amazing and when you're meditating then and you can let your mind go and, you know, you don't want any chatter there because then the thoughts and, you know, they'll speak to you through thought, you know, it's telepathy. And from that, you know, that's where they taught me about the healing. It, you know, I don't use anyone else's modality because that's their truth for what they do. That's their gift. Mine's different. And so I wanted to really learn how my gift works so that I could use it in the very best way possible. Mm. Yeah, connect. Well, you're hearing thoughts. Like, is it so? Do you hear your own thoughts and your own words, or do you hear like? I guess it's kind of confusing because then people think that they're just making it up. Well, they do, but it it it, it becomes loud and clear. And there's another thing as well that can interfere with it is that if you don't if you don't protect yourself and keep these things out, entities. Once you've got rid of them, if you have any, uh, once you keep them out, and you you know you. And we have a prayer, it's called the 27 Esoteric Merkabar Field Prayer. It's on the website. And what it does is it's probably the most powerful prayer down here because the sacred geometry, create, creating that intent to put sacred geometry around you, high vibrational sacred geometry, will keep these things out. If you say that prayer or map of intent three times a day, that will keep the things out and allow you to be clear and also have a clear channel. Because if you start trying to talk to your beings off planet, they can interfere with that link, you know, and, and get involved. And that's why a lot of readers and uh, different people um, don't quite get the whole truth from the reading because they're not tapping into that pure angelic beings. They're, they're being manipulated by reptilian energy, you know. So it, it's another thing that you've got to keep yourself absolutely clear. Mm. Um. So did you, what was your mindset like when you were in corporate, corporate, the corporate world, right? Did you have an understanding of like what you do now? Like, was there a big aha moment? Like, did you develop into this philosophy that you have now as far as getting in touch with your guides? Like, what was, what was your mindset like back then? It was very uh, hamster wheel, mind shattered, uh, you know, because everything was really busy for the sake of being busy, of course. When you go to a corporate system, people nowadays are doing probably 10 or 15 people's work in one day that, you know, in 20, 25 years ago, there would be 10 extra people to do the work. And so they're really pushing you. Of course, you never get a second to yourself. And that's one thing I didn't enjoy, you know. I think, you know, if you if you evolved and, you know, you're getting really spiritual, you need to give yourself that time to be able to get in your space just to take stock and relax and let your mind go, you know, so 
And I talk to them because that beings every day, you know, all day, you know, I'm in there 12 hours a day. That's actually one of the reasons why my wife won't let me get a motorcycle because my concentration is, is not good enough, you know. Um, really? Because, well, I'm in the ethers a lot, you know, so it's difficult to stay down here and focused, you know. And sometimes she talks to me and said, you didn't hear what I say, did you? Uh, what, no, can like, you tell me again? <laughs> what, what, are those, what do those conversations sound like? I mean, when you're up there in the ethers. Well, they just talk to you about, you know, what's going on. Um, some Maybe a client you had in the day, oh, you need to look at that, or you need to look at this. And I talk to them every day because... When I do healings, I put people in portals. So, and therefore, you know, you talk to because that beings about, so, you know, where's the liver at? Because how's the liver function? What percentage? Oh, it's 47% or it's 64% because I can't tell just by a look at the liver. It's, it's a liver, you know. Does it look a bit sick? Probably. Does it look paralyzed? Yeah, it looks a little gray, but I can't tell what, you know, percentage it's actually running at. So I always ask them what percent? Oh, 47. Okay, so let's get the liver back up. And, same with other things, you know, um, uh, you know, we look at the whole thing and I'm talking to them day in, day out, you know, about different aspects of the healing mm -hmm. because I need to know percentages. I need to know how the person's doing and anything else we could do. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of ongoing. And when you're the ethers for 12 hours a day, when you come back down, it's really difficult to get grounded and focus, you know, on this third dimensional world. It's crazy, you know, so... Did you ever have to do like evidential like experiments to kind of like show yourself that you were doing this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did. And, you know, what's interesting is, I mean, we've had a lot of results. People have been back to hospitals and, for example, aneurysms. Why, why do you get an aneurysm? Why does your artery bulge out? Well, neurotoxins that are in the body weaken the artery and it just bulges out so we use a very thick energy paste it on it it actually recreates tissue and the aneurysm has gone and people have gone back they've scanned it well where's the aneurysm gone this is not normal and you know like osteoporosis or osteopenia you know loss of bone density why does that happen well if the parathyroid you know behind the thyroid gets uh, paralyzed because of emotion you leach calcium out your bones and again, we've used that energy to paste on the bones and it's it's got them back to, I remember a lady with severe osteoporosis of the hips, osteoporosis in the whole uh, body. I worked on her for about four months and she went back for a Dexter scan and they said, wow, your hips are mild osteopenia and the rest of it's back to normal density. What are you doing? You know, and so we've got results for that. But, um, but, you know, I proved to myself, I think, when I was uh, bankrupt and, you know, struggled, I mean, I lived out of a car. I spent some time, I managed to get an apartment that was paid by the government because I had no money. So, you know, they paid rent, and, you know, we got social security, whatever, uh, for a few years. And uh, I, I tested a lot of things out. Some extraordinary things could happen. And I think sometimes you need to test things out for yourself, Uh would I do it in front of people? No, because, you know, it's not a circus act. It's, it's, it's really a confirmation to yourself that you can do these things, you know. Mm -hmm. We vibrated yeah. the molecular structure of water, put your hand through a wall, um, you know, various things that, you know, could I do them now? I don't know. I've not tried because once you've done these things and you can prove to yourself that you have the mindset and the power to do them, then you're good to go. Then you've got the complete faith that the God realm, you know, whoever you believe is the god realm i mean i talk about prime uh, god goddess prime creator of all it is which is the the creator of all this and then then you've got other beings like beings you know angelic beings like the mechizedek beings and you know actorians who who you work with down here to help people uh, heal you know so mm -hmm. yeah no i think you're right on like right so i have this <clears throat> i have this open-minded skepticism right like everything I have to experience it for myself because it is my own experience. So like my experiments with consciousness, right? Like whether it's uh, remote viewing or healing or whatever, right? Like it, it has to be my own experience. I can't have somebody else tell me about it, right? Like, because it's not my, it's not that, you know, it's not their experience. It's mine. And then when you tell somebody that, right, you present the evidence, like it, it all it does is make them try to argue against your evidence that you've that you've garnered for yourself so it's like they just end up muddying the waters a bit so it's like ah oh, that is that's not right blah 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 and then uh you know you're kind of like start doubting yourself but 
it, the, the, the proof is in like you actually doing it and seeing it for yourself. That's, that's all that matters really. It's like, Oh yeah. You know? Once you're confident, it's, it's getting that inner strength and confidence, getting back to that sovereign self where you really believe in yourself and you believe in your gifts, but it takes a while. Cause like you say, you got to really try the gifts out. I mean, you know, my gift is not painting at all. If I went to a gallery and started painting, they said, get out and don't come back because it's not my gift. If I, Am I a master chef? No. I mean, I love cooking and I'm good at it, but I need a recipe. Don't tell anybody, but I need a recipe. You know, I'm not one of these people who can just walk in and you get like four ingredients. So you can make something like, oh, wow, that's off the charts because that's not my gift. You know, everyone's got different gifts and it's all healing. You know, even food is healing in my opinion. Sure. You know, like a painting, if, if someone creates a masterpiece painting, um, you know, when you look at it, wow, you know, the energy of it's healing in itself, you know, it brings you joy and joy is healing, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, everyone's got different gifts. But, you know, to me, the gift, if people are looking for the gift, you've got to look at something that you don't even have to try, you know, like piano playing. There's four-year-olds who can play the piano better than a concert pianist at the age of four. That's truly a God gift, you know. Uh, so I think you have to look at something that's just natural to you. You don't even have to try, you know, you just basically do it in yeah well that's the thing right like you just and it, again people are just so used to listening to other people and uh, you can't blame them because we come here and we don't know we, we have these belief systems we have society that tell us things we have these religious dogmas we have all of these experiences happening at once and you're just kind of programmed you're just kind of indoctrinated with, the, with these beliefs and you just walk around and then you know, do you ever question it? No, not really. I mean, if everything's good, your comfort level's good. Like, why would you question anything? It's when you oh, yeah. start getting older and you're like looking around, you're like, man, it just seems like this, cir this circle of like ongoing suffering. And it's like, is this what, you know, some people wake up and say, is this what I'm here for? Right? Like, and you start looking at, at different um, points of view, different authors, different philosophers, and you're like, man, maybe they're on something. You know, really, I mean, what is it, <laughs> what is it they're talking about? You know, what did Aristotle talk about? What did Plato, Socrates, all these guys start talking about? You know, know thyself. What does that mean? What does even know thyself? And a lot of people are like, go inward. And you want to know, well, how do I go inward? And then you start learning about meditation. You start doing your meditation techniques and you start doing transcendental meditation and you, you're sitting in your chair and you almost fall out of your chair and you're like an hour went by and it feels like five minutes and it's like what is that? oh yeah <laughs> you know it's amazing because <clears throat> when you go the, when you go the other side you know there's no time so it's like you know at night a lot of people uh starsy people in particular but a lot of people uh go off planet you know the, the soul leaves the body on an umbilical cord you, you go and do stuff you come back, you wake up, you think, oh my gosh, I, I'm exhausted. You know, you feel more tired in the morning than you do in the evening before you went to bed. And the reason is because you might have done three, five years work in that night, learned a lot. But of course, when you wake up, you don't know because you don't need the information until you need it. And when you need it, it's completely there, you know, and I've seen that so much. Mm -hmm. so the problem is, is like when people do that, when they experience that, that larger consciousness system, or they, they experience the ethereal, ethereal realm or they feel they experience out of body. They don't know how to, they don't know what to do with it. They, they immediately, the analytical mind wants to immediately put labels on it and say, this is what you're experiencing or what is it? You know, I, I don't know what, the, I cannot compute this experience. I don't know what this is. You're crazy. You're you need to go see a doctor to, to get a prescription, the numbness, because what I'm, what you're computing right now makes no sense to this experience that I'm feeling right now in this reality. So a lot of people get confused with, you know, trying to process that information from right now, this, this desk, like this right here, oh, this is my reality. But when they experience things, even in their dreams, the body drops away. And now you're experiencing consciousness at its, at, in its purest, that the purest form it is, that is what you uh, essentially are. And then when you have like these documented out of body experiences, or you have these, you know, this psi phenomena or you have you go into your imagination and you start uh you know talking to other entities or beings or you know people that have passed over a transition and they're giving you information that you could have not possibly known while you're while they were here and you you know you fact check that that information and it comes out to be true and you're shaking your head you're like you're scratching it you're like 
how is this possible? Like this is people, uh, uh, the scientific community is telling me that this is, this cannot happen because this is, this is not causal, you know, this is not cause and effect. This is something outside of time and space. And it's, you know, people don't know how to deal with it because it's, it's not what we've been taught. I don't know if that makes sense. No, no, it's true. Actually. And you look at, you know, if you look at schools all over the world, they don't really teach very much. I mean, history is all, you know, not quite correct, especially over here. And, uh, you know, they just teach stuff that, you know, most people would never use, you know, if, if they were, if they created schools to actually discover your gifts and, and give you the instruments and the backing to be able to believe in yourself, you know, um, a lot of these gifted people would really move forward. But of course, instead, they'll prescribe something like Largatrol or some antidepressant or something to numb the pineal gland down. It's always based on fluoride and, and they just become numb. You know, the senses disappear and it's really sad, you know. I mean, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I'd love to see schools uh, for, you know, people that want to do their spiritual gifts, you know, so they could really just focus on them mm -hmm. without the stress of having to do things they don't enjoy, you know. <laughs> materialism, it's the, the uh, we're post-industrial age here. We have materialism and people think that the, the more that I obtain, the more that I'll be happy and the more p possessions that I have, the the more or the higher I'll rise in society. And when they get to that point where it's not true, right? Like it's not, it's not the truth. It is actually more things you have. Uh, I feel like the more lost you are really. And oh, yeah. the job that you have, the corporate job, right? Like climbing that ladder, you get to the top. I mean, I don't know if that ladder ever stops, but if you ever get to that metaphorical top, you look down, you're like, for what? Right? Like I've wasted a lot of my time trying to get to this to, to the top of this and for what empty relationships or or um, yeah. stress or cancer or uh, health problems and what's the point <laughs> what's the point right <laughs> like i'm here try, when, I, when i went bankrupt you know i had a bentley and i was so embarrassed because you know i went bankrupt uh someone let me borrow an apartment for four weeks i had no money for food nothing I had this Bentley in the garage that I couldn't even afford to put gas in, and I was just embarrassed. And why on earth did I buy this thing? You know, it's a very expensive bit of tin on wheels. You know, but but what was interesting? I had this Bentley watch I bought with it. You know, and it was it cost me about I don't know sixteen eighteen thousand pounds, like twenty five thousand dollars, whatever. And I had no food at all this one day, and I thought, watch or food, food wins. So I went down to this uh, gentleman in, um, he was a Jewish gentleman in, in Manchester, you know, and he, yes, my boy, I said, I've got this uh, watch, you know, it was a Breisling Bentley special edition, whatever it was. So I gave it to him, he said, well, it is authentic. I said, yeah, it's the receipt. Well, I need to check it myself, come back in two hours, my friend will come in and take the back off, you know, anyway, I went back. <clears throat> yeah, it's authentic. He said, I'll give you uh, 1,500 pounds, you know, food or watch oh food winners yeah and i took it you know because i at that time i'd let go of everything and it it taught me a lot and it, it, it was important to lose everything because i don't put anything on on stuff now you know stuff is just stuff if it's there you know thank you god for the blessing but if it's not there who cares you know i put so much emphasis now on it's about people and community and family around you starseed family you know or, or soul family as we call it I think that's really important. Get back to your soul family, you know. Sure. But I mean, you're in this, you're in this probably the darkest night of, of soul, right? Story, right? Like you have lost everything. You're trading things in and you can't afford food um, until you sell your watch. Um, how long did that progress? Like or degress? It lasted about three years, but I always, it's, it's interesting. The first education I had is um, somebody sent me to Belize, <clears throat> said, There'll be food and, you know, water there and whatever, you know. So I went over to Belize to do some healings and, you know, be amongst some people and uh, there was no food. Mm, okay. So now obviously being powerless victim at the time, you know, because I wasn't that strong then and I thought, well, you know, I'm not going to ask anybody for anything. So I didn't, you know. Got to day 10, getting pretty hungry, you know. No one gave us food. Got to day 15, Getting a little bit tired now, like exhausted because my energy level was dropping because no food. So I got to day 21. I said, I've had enough of this. I said, okay, 
dear God, I command to get food, and I get it right now, and I thank you, God, and I put some real power into it. Within, <laughs> within 15 minutes, the most dodgy chap in Belize <laughs> is coming around like this and looking around. He said, Chris, look, I'm going to give you 50 Belize dollars. Don't tell anybody because they'll think I'm weak. Okay, well, thank you. Bless you, you know. This is 15 minutes after manifesting, and it's it's the guy that you would never expect to give anything out, you know. And 50 Belize dollars in US is probably about, at the time, was about $15. And that lasted me two weeks. And I went for a meal that night, you know, after 21 days of food, and I couldn't even eat it because my stomach had shrank so much, you know, I had like two or three spoonfuls. But, but I was so grateful for that. And it taught me after that, you know, I found that, I always had enough, you know, I flew back, I, I came to America because I met this lady who asked me to stay with her in Hollister, which we're in now. And um, I flew back to Heathrow and I didn't have any money. And I thought, how am I going to get out the um, out of the parking lot? And, you know, instances happened where some money was put in my account. I had enough money to pay the bill. It's, it was always there. You know, if you had the faith, the, the, the instruments that you need, money or otherwise is always there, you know. How long, what was the longest that you went without food? Was it 21 days? Yeah, I had several instances, like seven days, 10 days, you know, and uh, I just couldn't find enough money to get food. I remember the seven day one. It was interesting because uh, the guys let, let me in his, he asked me to stay in his house to look after it. There was no food. Great. But he left like 36 pence, like 40 cents, you know. Oh, so I went to the local, you know, supermarket, Tesco's is like Walmart, whatever. And um, the only thing I found for that was one like bun, you know, like a bread bun, you know. So I bought this thing and I cut it in seven. I just ate a little piece of that every single day, you know. So it, it got me over. At least I had some food to focus on. But 21 days is a long time to go without food. You know, you have to really be careful. I don't recommend anyone doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. But it did teach me a lot. I need I needed the lesson to understand manifestation because you, sometimes you've got to get to that precipice where, okay, I've had enough of this. I'm doing food, you know, and, and suddenly you've got the that, you know, extraordinary power of intent to create the reality. Mm. Did that teach you like that you could like survive on your own, right? Like you didn't need to take a job just for the money that you could go explore yeah. the world, you know? Yeah, I mean, I went to India, you know, really interesting because, you know, I didn't know much about India. And I was going to um, uh, McLeod Gange where the Dalai Lama is. And uh, I was going to meet him. But in fact, you know, when I got there, he, he was in the US. So, oh, well, I'm not going to meet him this time. But but that was really interesting because um, I got on a bus and I think it was uh, US $1 and maybe 20 cents to go 16 hours from the Punjab region to there, you know. And when you see these things about people standing up on the bus, it was like standing. They all had turbans on. It was pretty stinky. <laughs> and I was just, I fell asleep standing up. When I woke up, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, this is where I am. It was amazing. Uh, it's amazing. It's good to have those um, experiences. I wouldn't want to do it now. Probably not. But uh, but I enjoyed the experience. You know, I always look at every single and. That's what everyone should look at. Going bankrupt, marriage broke up, you know, all the things happen for a reason. And I think it's always a blessing. You just don't quite see it at the time, you know. I remember being in the middle of Manchester with no food and I was kind of in tears. I said, okay, God, what's going on? I don't understand, you know. I had two, like, Walmart bags, one with a couple of shirts in and something else. I've been working for 21 years, lost several million pounds, and I don't understand it. And it was clear as day. They said, it's the right time. What do you mean it's the right time? It's the right time. You'll see. And by goodness, I did. But, you know, I didn't see right then. It just took me a while to, you know, transmute the whole life into a, a new form of life and a new way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And it was such a blessing. I, you know, I would, I would never want to get rid of that uh, experience because it makes you into the amazing person you are today. Sure. You know, so. Yeah, now I'm writing this. Um, I'm just I'm doing some journaling, re like recently, like on Sundays, and like uh, I'm going back to my like, you know, parts of my life where I, in the moment that I was just kind of like, really on the outs, right? Like just kind of like just upset with how my circumstances were, or this why is this happening to me? Like this isn't fair. Like I'm a good guy. Like a 
but then like the as i as i am writing and i'm looking back at that that you know that circumstance or that situation like i'm i'm now finding the gifts in that moment right like there's there's oh, yeah. there's gifts that we're just not conscious to because of the emotion or the the distraction of us like being um you know either too caught up in the drama or just you know we're just not able to see it right like i mean i mean you think about the gifts that you had right like the 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 gift of freedom right like to know that you can go oh, and, and be be bankrupt or or broke or living out of your car and not eat for 21 days and, but you're not going to that job anymore you're not going you know to that corporate job where you're miserable you're you're broke but you, you know you're not eating for 21 days but then you say all right you have this realization of i have this strong intent to create something and i and i you know not like you're testing god but you're kind of testing god but you're saying you're testing the universe maybe or you're testing this idea of manifestation and you say i need to eat i need some food help me out please god and within 15 minutes you're fed I mean, that kind of gives you confidence to say, all right, well, what else can I do? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I remember, you know, uh, in England, I I was driving around one night. I went to the uh, A1M on the motorway. You could stay there for two hours and, you know, I had nowhere to stay. I was kind of half living out of the car. Sometimes I stayed with people. And this one night, I thought, you know, there was a, there was a hotel, motel type thing there. So I, I drove to it and went outside. And there's a guy outside. So I got out and just... Um, hang around a bit and guy came in, what's your story? I explained to him, he goes, what you do healing? Said, yeah. Tell you what, I'll get you a hotel room if you do a healing one. Okay. So we did it. I got a hotel room for that. And lots of little instances like that happened where, you know, it's such a blessing. Mm -hmm. And now I just, I think to me, you know, being, being right up there and getting there is, is really experiencing gratitude on a new level, you know, because, we're taught like get a gratitude stone and you know five minutes okay god look, i'm grateful for my stuff i'm grateful for my wife car whatever that's it you know we're done because i don't have the time gratitude isn't like that you know to me gratitude you're grateful every second of minute of every day i mean i just i just smile sometimes say wow i can do this work you know we're, we're slam busy you know we're booked about three or four months out I must be doing something right because the healings work and you know and i thank god every day every second of every day you know because it's a way of being it's a it's a way of feeling you know what i mean it's not just well god we're going to give you five minutes that doesn't cut the mustard you, you've got to you've got to get into this surrender gratitude like wow thing you know sure yeah I and can it's get, amazing I can get, you know? yeah i can get with that like i can definitely get with that the gratitude is definitely something that pulls you back into that feeling of like higher than your self vibration of like you see oh, it, yeah you know it anchors you back into the moment where you can well, you sit. also feel like comforted you know in some mm -hmm. way because the gratitude and all the beautiful things that happen in you know when i started this ministry it was it was called chris mcamish the the global enlightenment project is a project of it when i started it build it they'll come they said so opened the office opened the door two months went by nobody's coming you know and the odd person came in that we knew, but, and then one day I said, well, why aren't, okay, God, why aren't people coming? It's within, get out there. Oh, okay. So, and the first place I ever went to was uh, Unity Church in uh, St. Petersburg in Florida. So I go there uh, thinking, well, it's their bookshop, you know, it was slammed. And in fact, people were banging on the door to go, you know, why do they want to come and see me? <laughs> you know, it was amazing, but, you know, I did a deal with God. So look, God, I don't like money side. I don't like the accounts. Don't like the sales. Don't like anything like that. You do that. I'll do the work. And they said, okay. And ever since that, you know, kind of deal with God where, look, you know, can you take care of this? Because it's not my deal. It's just happened, you know. And now mm -hmm. we're always busy. And, you know, I get really excited about it because it's just amazing. The And the change in people, that's what really excites me. Like, oh, my cancer's gone. My this, that, and the other's gone. My Lyme disease we have a new protocol for stripping out Lyme disease, HIV, AIDS, Agent Orange, and more gallons. It strips out the body completely. And, you know, it's a 20-week program, and people are just blown away by it. Uh, so, you know, things like that that really excite me. Nothing else does. You know, I've got a Chevy truck, so what? You know, it's just a truck. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got, a, we've got a ministry house. If we didn't have it tomorrow, as long as we've got somewhere to operate, but, you know, the IT equipment we have, uh, we have a lot of IT, very expensive equipment, so we can make sure that the stuff is stable and it works. 
um, that's part of the ministry. That's the key tool, really, to be able to do your work, you know. So, but apart from that, nothing else really matters, you know. Hmm. Has your practice or your healing, I mean, you you're, you sound like you're getting pretty technical, you know, tech savvy over there with the IT stuff. Are you using IT stuff during the healings? Like, are you able to to use that for, for upgrading your healing? Well, I always, uh, I work remotely. I never have anyone in the office for my own protection and their protection. It's just better, you know, um, because it's all about trust. And, you know, if someone else has gone out and say, well, he touched me inappropriately or he did something, and, you know, game over. So, so I always do it by remote, either uh, by phone. Um, we use Skype, believe it or not. We pay 50 bucks a month and you can phone anywhere in the world. So I use Skype for that. If they've got Skype, Skype, great. If not, then you can phone anywhere in the world and, we do it all by phone, remote viewing, phone, and everything else. Um, I do the sessions three times a week. We have we have sessions three times a week, like Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, um, where we do like by donation. So we get a lot of people on it, you know, because they have, don't have any money. And I always tell them, never shame yourself. I've been there, got the T-shirt on this one. So, and they come on and, you know, it just helps them get into that space of being able to manifest. But we use Zoom for that, you know. So, yeah, you know, we've... You know, we get fast processor stuff so that, you know, we get the streaming right and, you know, everything else. So it's, um, sure. you know, to me, investment in equipment, you know, don't ever, again, if you can open a spiritual uh, company, in my opinion, don't ever put it down and get the cheapest thing because you're going to need to replace it. I started off with that and the things, the computer we had lasted about four or five months and they got so full, you know, the things were taking 30 seconds to move the calendar by one day, you know, and I thought, this is no good. Sure. So, you know, we've always kept up and, you know, invested God's money in, in the work of God, especially, you know, effectively. So did you ever, I like, think did, it's did you ever like doubt, like, you know, what your, your journey was? Like, did you ever, did you ever feel like, man, I, I just don't know. I, I can't see the end result of this. No, I always knew I'd do the healing. Didn't know how it would happen. Uh, I knew it would be, I felt like it'd be big, but I said, okay, well, let's just see, you know, and I just went with the flow. I think the biggest thing for me was surrender, you know, surrender to God. God's got my back. Whatever they want me to do, they're going to get me to do it. And whatever uh, energy exchange there is, um, then it'll be there. One of the things I learned early on, though, is when we first started doing healings, we used to kind of get a, like, a couple of lessers, a tomato, and maybe a carton of eggs. And I thought, can't pay the bills with this stuff. <laughs> but at the time, I hated money, hated it, you know, with a passion, because, of course, you'd just gone bankrupt. So anyway, this pastor from Unity Church sat me down one day. She goes, so she said, um, so you got to look at it, you know, um, if you get a lettuce and a couple of tomatoes for healing, can you go to the, the local company, the electric company, and pay your bill? Uh, no. She said, why not? Well, they don't accept letters and tomatoes. She said, what do they accept? Well, the dollar bill, do, you know, of course. And she said, but what's the difference? You know, it's all energy. It's all exchange. And, you know, I sat back and thought about it. I said, I know, you're right. But it's funny how people still criticise it. Even for me, you know, even though we do healings by donation, if you've got no money, you still do it. There's always people who criticise, like, well, how dare you charge for healings? And you know, Jesus never did. I said, well, there's a couple of things about Jesus. He got free transport. He got free beds for the night. Uh, he also converted water to wine, so he got free tipples. So, I mean, he's good to go. <laughs> you know, with this day and age, um, you can't do that because it's all monetary-led, and so you've got to have the correct exchange, be it the dollar bill or whatever, to be able to pay the bills. And, you know, um, that's when it, you know, took off, and I realized, okay, we've got to charge, you know, some money for it, you know. And... Uh, and I think, moreover, if people get things for free, one thing I've learned about people is they don't really take it seriously. If they have to pay something for it, they put a value on it. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm going to really show up for this healing. And that's another thing. Sadly, in this third-dimensional world, you know, it seems led by money, you know. Mm -hmm. It's what it is, you know, so. Yeah, well, exactly. You're exactly right. It's just energy. It's a form of energy. Uh, oh, yeah. Me giving that energy to you. Whether it's like me being thankful and grateful, I'm still giving you that energy of, of thank thankfulness, right? Like I mean that of love, oh, yeah. right? So I mean it's all yeah. it's all relative. Um, Absolutely. I, well, it's I, like you know, for example, if 
if Walmart had a really top television, you know, whatever it is, so they've got this really expensive television, two and a half thousand dollars. Okay, we're going to put it on special offer for 10 bucks. People go in there, no, nah, that can't be any good for 10 bucks. <laughs> they go and buy the expensive one at the back when actually, you know, it's it's a deal. But, but you know, again, people wouldn't value it. $10, yeah, you can't go to TV for that, you know, so... It's, it's interesting how people value things at mon- monetary, you know, and I don't, you know, I always look what's behind it, you know, I think it's mm-hmm. really important. Mm. I think it's awesome, man. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. How can people find you? Yeah, if you want to do some healings or, or just help to get, you know, I'm here to get help, get back to your sovereign self and get that passion going, you know, with your gifts. But, you know, if you want to go to uh, the, the website, globalenlightenmentproject.com, We've got a lot of instruments to help with ADD, OCD, the brain soothes. We've got meditations. They're guided, but it's a start, you know, and uh, we've got, we've also got guided meditation, release emotion. You know, there's a whole slew of things. You can come and do one-to-ones. You can do specialized groups. You can do the generic groups three times a week by donation. If you have no money, do that. And of course, if you've got a lot of serious things like immune autoimmune disorders caused by stealth pathogens we have uh the protocol to strip those out so it's all there you know so mm. i love it well christopher i can't thank you enough sir for coming on the show this has been fa- fabulous i just i love the mission <laughs> i love what you're doing i appreciate it oh uh, thanks Trey. i mean i love it we're dedicated to this you know one thing i would tell you is it it kind of becomes a way of life you know what i mean it's not a job it's just what you do and sometimes you know you can do stuff one day and be busy and next day You've got some interviews. Next day, you're doing something else, and it's just you know, it doesn't feel like work. It's it's just a passion and a way of life. And I think if you can get to that place where it becomes a way of life, you, you've cracked you've cracked life. You really have way of life. Still trying to crack that code, my my friend. That's for, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you'll get there. Just you're a warrior, Trey. You're a warrior. <laughs>